Welcome everyone, it's Amber Mushtaq from U Council. Today we'll talk about um, fighting parking tickets in Toronto. This is a very basic lecture that provides some basic understanding of the process and some tips about how to fight uh, these parking tickets. Um, I, I, I'm, not, I'm not a lawyer who practices anything with parking tickets, so this, is, uh, this information is coming from my personal experience with a parking ticket that I had received and I thought uh, the ticket was unfair. And so you're welcome to, to post your comments and, and provide your own tips and your own experience of how to fight these tickets if you believe they are worth fighting. Um, again, a quick disclaimer that this course is not legal advice, so if you have any specific questions, you should contact a lawyer or a paralegal. Some of the examples of the kind of infractions that lead to parking tickets are um, you know, unpaid meter parking, uh, you park in a disability parking place uh, illegally, you park close to a fire hydrant or you illegally park um, your vehicle generally. So these are a few infractions. If you want to look into uh, the infractions in more detail, maybe the good source is uh, to go to Google, type in Provincial Offenses Act. Provincial Offenses Act is the legislation that talks about um, all kind of infractions, parking, uh, traffic tickets and whatnot. And that's the source of legislation that you may want to look at if you need to learn more about it. Um, if you follow the table of contents and part two is the one that talks about commencement of proceedings for parking infractions and if you expand this particular part you will see all kinds of information the definition of parking infraction uh, municipal bylaws uh, how do you how do you uh, provide the uh, notice of intention to appear how do you set it down for trial so on and so forth so that information is there on provincial offenses act and you can review that in more detail. So but these are some of the examples that I can think of that I've provided. These are some of the common um, incidences where you get a parking ticket. So once you receive a parking ticket, you have three options. One is you pay voluntarily within seven days. Um, you pay the set fine, which is to be paid in 15 days, or you set a trial date, uh, which is to be done in 15 days. So item number one, voluntary payment. If the, the face of the ticket states that X amount of dollars can be paid as voluntary payment, then you, you can make that payment. Otherwise, it will state the uh, amount of fine, um, and, and then you can pay that fine in 15 days. Um, and so there are easier ways in Toronto to pay those uh, fines or voluntary payments. You can do it online uh, on City of Toronto website through Visa or any other uh, credit cards. And so that's pretty straightforward. You can do that. If you need to set it down for trial, which you know my recommendation is, if you have time and time and energy to um, to uh, challenge the the parking ticket, then that's sort of a better strategy. Even if you think that um, you you deserve the, the the ticket, you did cause that infraction, uh, you may be able to save some money by by disputing it. So for trial, uh, you literally have 15 days from the day that the the infraction ticket is issued to you, and one of the ways that you, or the only way that you can set it down for trial is that you have to appear in person uh, at that court office or somebody has to appear on your behalf as your agent in that court office. It has to be done physically and then you advise, you go there with your uh, ticket and then you take a, you know, I take a queue or stand up in the queue and go to the window and then you basically say, I want to, um, to challenge this ticket. I want you to set a date for trial and, and they will mark that this is a notice of intention to appear in court. That must be done within 15 days. If you don't do it in for the, within 15 days, then um, then it may be determined that you have, you have act, you are actually guilty of that offense, and and your um, penalty may be set. So there are consequences if you delay it. So you must do it as soon as possible. Once you have um, scheduled for trial, you will receive a trial notice in mail, and it will it will have a date that you have to appear in such and such court and such and such a time, uh, and you will have a court number. Uh, indicated on that notice. So you appear there and you will notice that you, you go outside of that courtroom and outside of that there will be a small board which will have a list of all the people who are attending that court that day. Find your name there, make sure that you, are, you have the correct time and then make sure that you are well, 10 or 15 minutes before the opening time you kind of line up outside that door of that courtroom because um, you do want to be ahead in line to get uh, dealt with sooner. Um, in terms of your options, once you are um, once you are 
in that line. So once the door opens, you will see that the prosecutor will be at the front, uh, close to the bench where the Justice of Peace will sit. And everybody lines up on the right or left side of the prosecutor, and the prosecutor will deal with you one by one. This is prior to the Justice of Peace even attending or coming there. So this is sort of a preliminary process. And, and uh, you know, so there's a queue. You, you get to your number, and then the prosecutor will ask you how you're pleading. So you can either plead guilty. You can plead not guilty. That means that you want to proceed with the trial. You can say that I am there to uh, with the, uh, you can plead guilty with an explanation, which is an interesting way of pleading guilty. But I, I've seen that happening, uh, at least in the process that I attended, um, and that you, you are guilty. You made that mistake of illegally parking or improperly parking, but you have an explanation that could uh, get you some sympathies from the Justice of Peace. Um, and then you can also say to the prosecutor that you want to wait for the police officer to arrive and then you will decide what you want to do. Uh, and, and that's sort of an important thing to note because um, the officer who has issued you the ticket, that officer must be present uh, for your case to proceed, especially if you are proceeding not guilty. So there is a common way to get rid of these tickets is that oftentimes officers have you know multiple commitments and they cannot attend uh, on that particular day um, uh, with respect to your matter and if they don't attend uh, on that particular day when the time comes for you to appear before the justice of peace then your matter just simply gets thrown out so uh, oftentimes it is uh, actually in every single case it's uh, what i suggest is that you should wait for the police officer and see if the officer is attended uh, and if the officer is attended then you can decide what you want to do so those are some of the options prior to commencing the trial process um, now the justice of peace arrives everybody stands up um, justice of peace sits down and then one by one prosecutor will call in individuals and you will notice I mean I when I attended this court I thought it, it was like a zoo you uh, the prosecutor is going through about hundred people in, in like an hour hour and a half and and they have to decide on if somebody is accepting uh, the guilty plea then that needs to be entered the person has to accept it get the fine uh, get the notice uh, you know provided to him and then move out and so this is sort of a pretty fast process um, and so there are advantages in there and disadvantages in there um, that we'll, we'll I'll talk about briefly but you are called in uh, normally what happens is the prosecutor will will complete all of the um, all of the 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 people who have pleaded guilty because that's faster and then will hold off on 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 matters where the officer has not shown up so basically you know he or she will wait till the till pretty much the end to see if the officer shows up for that particular case uh, so that the matter can proceed to trial and then the last part are the people who are pleading not guilty and they are proceeding with trial so that's sort of how um, the process begins when it's your turn you want to make sure that when you're appearing in the court, uh, you are dressed properly. It doesn't have to be in a suit and tie, but uh, something uh, presentable. And you want to be humble. You want to be. Uh, you want to gain sympathies of the justice of peace. Um, justice of peace is always addressed as your worship. Um, it's not your honor. Judges are addressed as your honor. Justice of peace is addressed as your worship. So you address justice of peace as your worship. Um, answer the questions when asked answer only the questions that are asked make your submissions when you're allowed to do not ever ever interrupt the justice of peace do not interrupt the prosecutor and so just in a you know these are sort of the simple basic manners of exchange of communication that you must follow in court because under no circumstances do you want to upset the justice of peace because believe me that you will not win any favors uh, by making unnecessary arguments uh, with the justice of peace you want to explain your situation, especially if you have a reasonable explanation. And I saw, uh, in my experience, when I attended twice on the same matter, I noticed that every single time somebody came up with an explanation which kind of made sense to the Justice of Peace, it every single time it at least resulted in reduction, a significant discount in the fine. So I saw uh, fines of you know which were the, which which were. Uh, requiring the penalty of two hundred dollars or so came down to thirty dollars, forty dollars or so. So it's a, so you could get a significant reduction in your fines if you have a reasonable explanation. And the explanation could be, you know, like you you parked on a 
by the fire hydrant, but it was raining or there was snow and you couldn't see it properly, um, uh, things like that, or you had some emergency and then you needed to, uh, to rush to some place. All of these uh, explanations are not enough to justify that your case may be acquitted um, unless you have an explanation that really challenges the validity of the ticket that has been issued. But the explanations, um, uh, we all have uh, issues in our lives on a day-to-day -day basis which put us in a situation that uh, you know we may end up doing infractions that we were not hoping that we will commit. So it happens and justices of peace are usually uh, cognizant of that and they take that into account. So if you, uh, and, th and that's one reason why I say that even if you feel that the ticket was properly issued, just by sheer fact that you um, go all the way to the court, schedule the trial date in person, attend the trial and provide an explanation, the chances are that you will get a significant discount in, in, in fines. I've, I've added a term called use of photos. If you have if you have reasons to believe that the ticket was improperly issued, you want to make sure that you take photos right at that time when the ticket was issued, not afterwards. So for instance, if you were given a ticket that you parked within three meters of the fire hydrant and you believe that you were you know not in three meters but four meters or five meters or something, you want to take pictures right then and there. Make sure that the pictures are able to prove what you are saying. You want to make sure that those pictures are notarized. A, you want to take those pictures yourself and make sure those pictures are notarized so you can use those pictures as evidence uh, at trial. So those are some of the things to keep in mind. I wanted to share my experience with you and, and, and why um, I ended up in front of, in front of uh, the court for this issue. I had one time, one Sunday morning, I was meeting some friends for brunch uh, in Liberty Village in Toronto, and I, it was a Sunday morning. Uh, I arrived there early. There was lots of street parking, meter parking available, and so I chose a very convenient uh, spot. There was lots of parking available. I parked my car on the first possible uh, parking spot on that street in front of the meter or close to the meter. I went to the meter, I took out the ticket, I paid it, I put the ticket on my dashboard and I went uh, to attend my brunch. I came back within the time that I had paid for and lo and behold I see that there's a parking infraction ticket on my windshield. So I was quite upset to see that and, I, and I initial, my initial thought was that the officer did not see that I had paid for parking. So I pick up the ticket and I read it and, and it says parked within three meters of fire hydrant and, and that kind of upset me and when I looked um, on the side of the street sure enough there was a fire hydrant there. So my, I, I was upset and I was quite upset primarily because uh, it was a city parking, the city had put the meter there and it was a city that had put the fire hydrant there and it was not a temporary fire hydrant, it was a permanent fixture. So I was quite upset that why city would allow parking within three meters when they have put a fire hydrant. So you can't, you know, send two controversial messages. And I only looked at the availability of parking and the parking meter. And because I, I noticed that there's parking allowed, I did not bother to look further to see if there was a fire hydrant there. And so I thought this was a mixed message. Uh, it was improper. And under the circumstances, my, my ticket should be thrown out. So that was sort of the principal fight that I wanted to take. Um, the end result was I was able to get my ticket thrown out, not because I had a, a valid explanation, but my trial took so long that um, I believe the prosecutors got tired of it and, and, the, and the court got tired of it. And so in my second appearance, the police officer just did not show up and, and they threw my case out. So that was one example of how you know these things operate. But in your case, there may be circumstances where the ticket is genuinely unfair um, and so you want to fight it. Um, but again, you know, you want to make sure that it is worth your time and effort. And if it's not, just pay the fine and move on. Uh, hopefully this is helpful. I will invite you uh, to share your experiences with the parking infractions and, and share any tips that you have, any suggestions that you have. By all means, post that on the video uh, in, in comment section. Um, and hopefully you have gotten some beneficial information from this lecture. Thank you for watching and we'll see you in the next lecture. Thank you.